Now this is a review that I did attempt a while back, but the rifle that I had on test had a bit of an issue with the magazines, but that has since been resolved. So here it is, second attempt. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and this is the Hauer Model 1100. This is a 22LR. This one is available in 22LR and available in 17 HMR. Let me just throw out some specs and we'll uh, have a bit of a closer look. So this is the Model 1100 made by Hauer of Japan. It is a bolt action rifle, as you can see. A quite sort of target orientated rather than a sporter. So I kind of like that. That's my sort of style. Uh, 18 inch chrome molly steel pinned to the receiver barrel and threaded for a silencer or moderator or brake, whatever you want to put on it. Like I said, available in 22LR. 22WMR as well, I forgot. Both those calibers, the barrel will be twisted in a one and 16 rate of twist. Uh, if you want a 17 HMR, that is a one in nine twist. Magazine, you get two supplied with the rifle. These are 10 shot magazines on the 22LR. I'll show you more about them in a moment. Two stage adjustable trigger, we'll give it a measure in a bit. Uh, there is a safety catch as well, synthetic polymer, kind of like a, like a tactical profile, or like I said, just a target orientated uh, stock, which I kind of like. Overall length is 940 millimeters. This thing is dead light, unscoped, at just over two and a half kilos. It's a real lightweight little rifle. As you can see in the footage, and you may have seen in a previous video where I just did a range time video with this, I was having loads of fun just plinking steel with this thing. Really, really good. I was out to, I was out to about 100, and, just under 130 yards. I did stretch it out a bit further, just, you know, I think it was about 160. Um, but yeah, just real nice little rifle. and pretty budget these are sub 500 pounds here in the uk not a new rifle by any means i'm not even sure whether they still make these things to be fair but after like i said its initial sort of hiccups that i had with one of these rifles the problem i was having it just wouldn't it was like double feeding it was dead weird but i notified uh, the guys that bring Hauer in and it's since been rectified on the well on the rifles that I was uh, using in tests. Thought I'd throw that out, you know. I'd just keep it real, keep it honest. And you know, guys who may have seen me post about this rifle a few months ago, and then no videos appeared. That's why. So let's take a closer look at this rifle then. So let's take it from the stock end. So it is a nice soft rubber butt pad on there fully ambidextrous stock which i like bit of a stock hook there to pull it in if you so desire you know if you want to get sort of super accurate pretty solid it doesn't feel like it's you know hollow crap but the stock feels fairly solid sling swivel stud there you'll notice on the pistol grip if i can just sort of spin it around Ooh. I think the scope is the heaviest part of this rifle. So pistol grip is real vertical. Got like this texturing going on there. And then moving along to, well, there is like a bit of a thumb rest there. It's not molded or anything. It just is what it is. It's it's not a bad grip. I guess it could be a bit, a bit more ergonomic, but let's just remember the price point of this rifle. The trigger guard is all molded, all pot molded polymer all the way along the fore end. Same sort of texturing on the fore end. Don't know if you can see that in the light. As the um, pistol grip, bit of M lock underneath. Not genuine M lock, I don't think, but it is M lock uh, compatible slots there. Sling swivel stud at the front. Not bad, not bad at all. Comes with a Picatinny rail. Uh, looking at it, 
Mm, I think there is a bit of MOA built into that. Doesn't say though, but it's all right. I mean, it's two two L R. One in sixteen twist on this two two L R. I've already uh, mentioned that tactical bolt handle with a pretty decent throw on it. So not to get in the way of any sort of scopes or anything. Uh, not got the degrees on that. What is it? Probably. Oh, I'm not going to guess, but it's a real, it's a real sort of uh, short throw on that. Really nice. Now, what I did find with this rifle, as it is a brand new rifle, from the get go, it was a little bit clunky. But the more I used it like after about 200 rounds, it got a lot, lot more slicker, which, which is good, which is good. There is your safety catcher there. Yeah, there, it just got slicker and easier to use. Polymer magazines, 10 round magazines. I had no problems uh, with these magazines. They seem to work really well. Nice rifle, nice combination with this Hawk Sidewinder that's on top with the sports match rings. It was just a, a fun rifle to sort of plink, a good, but I'm gonna say budget plinker. It worked really well. Available in this like OD green, as you can see here, and you can get them in black. I think you can get them in tan, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's just this OD green and black, but it really not bad. For its, you know, it's a price point thing, guys. You know, this isn't like, um, you know, a high end and shorts or anything. It's, you know, it's it's sub 500 pounds. So you get what you pay for. I like it. You know, I have got a little, I did find a, a little bit of a, a, a tiny issue with it, but I'll talk about that in a minute. There is your mag release there. Mag, mags and the release itself was positive, you know. Not bad at all. Now, functionality. What I did find with this rifle is, when you are operating the bolt, you've basically, I don't know, I think it's, maybe, maybe it was me, maybe it was, I'll hold my hands up if it was. Sometimes when I operate a bolt, I'll sort of grab this and, and push it forward, you know, and lock it down as you do. But if you lift this bolt slightly and push it forward, it gets caught up a little bit and then it tends to sort of, if you can sort of see that, it gets a bit sort of clunky. Whereas if you just, I know that's not very scientific, but whereas if you just push it without giving it any upward sort of lift, it's, it's sweet. It's pretty slick. But I found to start with, and I realized it was me, I was holding the bolt and without sort of noticing, giving it a bit of a, an upward lift to it, and it was sort of catching on the top of the, um, top of the action there. And then that was causing issues when it was stripping around out of the mag. But when I found, when I discovered it was me doing that, if I just literally pushed it forward, it was sound, there was no problem whatsoever. So, I don't know if I can kind of demonstrate that. I've got a snap cap here, let's pop a snap cap in. So, I don't know whether it'll do it like this, but, so, imagine I'm doing my my bit totally wrong, so I'm giving it a bit of upward, uh, you know, a bit of a push uh, up as I push forward. It was just, uh, 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 and there we go, we're, sn we're snagged up, lot. Oh God, I've proper jammed it now. Oh God, so here we go guys. A proper failure. So I've had to give that a bit of a bang. Let's get that out. There you go, that's what I was doing. Let's put the snap pack, the snap cap back in. Whereas if I do it like this, without giving it any upward motion, upward, you, you know what I'm on about guys, and just push it forward, it was fine. So, you just gotta be, you just gotta be careful. Oh, that's gone across the rat cave, never mind. 
So I found that quite interesting. I need that actually. I need to find that uh, snap cap because then we're going to give the trigger a pull. There we go. It went too far away. So that was my only issue with it. But once I got used to it, it was fine. I chugged loads of ammo through this, just plinking away, mainly on steel. I did zero it on a target, but by the time I zeroed, the target was a bit of a mess and I, I just put it on steel then. I was just having fun on steel, so I've not got a target to show you. But what I will say is with the right ammo, it's pretty, it is pretty accurate. It's pretty accurate for its price point. It's not match accurate, obviously, but expect sort of one inch groups one and a half inch groups with the right ammo the right ammo for this the, what i was using seemed to be the s and k long range and the s and k match so that seemed to be doing the job uh, with this rifle but i was just pinging steel guys i was having fun that's what it's all about right let's give this trigger a pull Right, let's load, let's load that snap cap correctly. And what we'll do, we will give this trigger a pull, see what it's doing. I've not even got my trigger pull ready because as ever guys, I'm ill prepared. So let's just put my trigger pull together. Rack, I thought you were supposed to be professional. Um, yeah, whatever. Right then, let's give this a pull. So yeah, that's got a snap cap in. So two stage trigger. Three pounds, 10 ounces. I think that, to be fair, could be a bit lighter than that. I think that was me pulling it a bit too hard there. Oh, no, hang on. I've got to do that again, I know. Oh yeah, three pounds, 7.4 ounces. Not bad, not bad on the trigger for a rifle. You know, this price point, and it's a nice trigger. It's a nice trigger. Screw cut at the end, like I mentioned, and it is a metal uh, thread protector on there. I didn't throw in a mod or anything, I just ran it as it was. Um, Nice fun rifle, nice fun rifle. You know, at the moment, money is tight as I uh, as I film this video for a lot of people. If you're after a budget, decent looking rifle that will do the job, you know, then for under 500 pounds in the UK, it's not bad, it's not bad at all. Anyway guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. Just a quick review of the Hauer 1100 rimfire rifle hmm i'll have to get hold of a 17 hmr that would be interesting to test that out but yeah pretty good pretty good thanks for watching guys that is rack and load see ya